about 40% of the children in Brazil on the whole are dropping out of school before the fifth grade. That's, uh, according to the United Nations statistics, it's a 39%. So that's four kids out of 10 are looking for some work, largely with very few skills by the time they're 10 years old, or they're just hanging around. So this project is designed to, it's preventative in a way, to keep kids from getting to the street. It's a considerable investment to put your child in school here, and more than many, many families have. So we've been looking for ways inside the, these communities to create educational opportunities, which basically means you have to help the mothers increase their incomes. And so I branched out from uh, strictly educational concerns to training people to produce a product and how to produce and sell and keep control of the finances and what they're making. I first came to uh, Bahia in 1967. I was a young faculty wife with a five-year-old son, and my husband was teaching here at the university. We'd just come back from a year in Africa, in South Africa, actually, and our little boy ended up with quite racist <laughs> feelings and ideas. He got very influenced by the, um, I don't know, the tensions in the street. And then we had a chance to come to Bahia a year later. And when we got here, our kid wailed, oh no, you didn't tell me we were going back to Africa again because Bahia is 80% uh, black as the descendants from the slaves. It was the center of the world's largest slave trade. And we were very uh, fascinated by this uh, sort of pretty vibrant African culture here. There were a lot of people here who still spoke an African language that was cantably a, a transplanted African religion which had flourished here and been synthesized with the Christian religion. And there was just a lot of rituals and uh, customs. Food, we bought food in the street here that we bought in Africa. We had the opportunity to come back to Bahia in um, 1984 and I was sort of cozily settled down writing a novel and enjoying my life here. A woman working for me as a housekeeper made a big impact on my life. She was a very sturdy, dignified, older woman, a grandmother who'd been taking in laundry, doing domestic work all her life, Valdeci da Silva. And uh, she basically was my Portuguese teacher. And it was the year that my marriage ended. Um, she was my only friend here. I wasn't working. My children were, my daughter was 15. My son was already a young man sailing off to South Africa again, where he ended up marrying a South African girl. And uh, my, my maid and I became best friends. And I got to know her and her family very well. And I made a commitment during that year to try and help uh, as many women here as I could basically sustain their children and keep them in school. I realized that economic dependence of the women was a really um, crucial factor in their lives. And research shows that aid money that goes directly into the hands of women has a better spin-off effect in terms of the health and education of the children. In the communities they call invasions, like, that's like squatters communities where people come and put up a little shack and put down roots and some of them are very old and have been there 25 or 30 years. Our established communities now, others are more recent. People come and go a lot in these communities, and so it's not like you have a kinship system that you know has a tradition and a culture that goes on over time, or that there's a relationship to the land where crops being taken off of it. These are urban communities with all of the problems of of um, you know high density population, low employment, impossibly low wages, no sewage system, malnutrition, typical. I tried to find some groups here. I didn't want to invent the wheel. I thought I'd find some democratic, accountable, humanistic type groups, but I didn't find anything that really wasn't, you know, church-based inside of one church or another. And uh, people in the favelas were very cynical about any attempt at community development. They felt it was just manipulation by politicians. Being in, in politics or interested in politics is, is synonymous like here, uh, here with being hypocritical and greedy. So when I would talk about, you know, increasing our political awareness or getting a political group going, 
people would say, oh, no, 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 they're, they're a very nice woman. They wouldn't want to be involved in anything like that. And so it's quite hard even to get the idea of uh, let's try and do something together. I met a professor here who was doing a um, history, a popular history of local people. And she was working with the Paulo Freire method of education, working inside of a, uh, of a community here. This professor took me to a community where I'm still working today. She said that the women there had actually gotten together, had taught themselves to read and write, had opened up a small community school. It had been a three-year struggle. They'd built the school on their own. That was Donna Aurora the name of the first woman who, who, who came and built, who put her own little hut up in the community and started to live there. We used to live in Joamboaba. Then the long drought began. It was during the drought that we traveled here to Bahia. When we arrived here, there was only wild jungle and dense forest. There wasn't anyone living here. And so when my husband arrived, he built a small shack, just a little one with only one door. And we didn't have any water at all. We didn't have that well over there. Rained, we collected the water from the puddles. That's how we got our water. And so we stayed. One day, a man came on a horse. He was armed with a big gun, came up behind us through the jungle. He said we had to leave here, that this was his land and he wanted the land to make a garden. And we told him that we had faith in God, that we're never going to leave here. We are very strong and we will never leave here, thank God. The natural leader of that community, Zefa, and I sort of formed a partnership She's the president of the Residents Association there and the driving force behind her community. And I joined arms with her and said, let's see what we can do. Here in Brazil, women are still very passive. And unfortunately, they are considered beneath men. Men have the power. Even though women may also work outside the home, the men expect the women to be at home when he arrives with meals and everything prepared for him. They have the power, and the women still feel inferior to men. And so the relationship between men and women is still very bad in Brazil. We began to look for ways for the women to raise their income. It became obvious to us that to keep children from going to the streets to work for their families, most of the children who go to the streets are, are responsible, economically important members of their family. And they're going to the street not to do drugs or become little thieves, but to help mom. And they go home at the end of the day with whatever they've been able to you know, buy or beg and um, take it back to her. I was looking for a, um, a technology, a product, something that the mothers could do that would increase their income. But it had to be a product that, was, that met so many criteria, it's practically impossible to find. One that would have a, a kind of a low-tech, highly transferable technique, which I thought this would, but it turns out to be, like everything, I guess, it's got its art. But at any rate, something that was low-tech, that didn't require a big capital investment in uh, you know, machinery or equipment that you could get started with relatively little money, that one woman could teach to another, or one kid could learn and pass on to another. Something that wouldn't produce health hazards for the people producing it, because there's a lot of things that you can kind of make at home, but, it's to, you know, with a lot of children around here, and I wanted something that was basically had as minimal chemical content as possible. So trying to find something that's culturally relevant, low tech, uses recyclable materials, can be produced and compete on the market there with quality goods, that youngsters who don't know how to read or write can learn to do relatively quickly, that you don't need a big capital investment. So this little product seemed to meet all of those requirements. It's principally to put in the hands of the young mothers here an alternative to either leaving their children alone while they go to work or um, sending their kids out in the street to hustle for them, which a lot do. This process of making angels is very good for us. It helps us to support our children, and it is a big help to us and to our husbands. We can also contribute to